everybody, um, so today's video is going to be how to quilt your table runner or your, your quilt using um, a walking foot on your domestic sewing machine. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do this just straight line, nice and even rows uh, quilting. So let's get to it. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine. Um, and now that we've got a basted um, project with the pin basting, we're going to start doing some quilting. And I'm just going to do some straight line quilting on my domestic sewing machine using a walking foot. Um, a lot of machines do come with these or you can buy them uh, for the machine. And what it does is it works in conjunction with your feed dogs, which are the, the rough things that are just underneath your needle. And a feed dog sort of do this kind of motion as you're, you're sewing and it moves your fabric through. But once you start getting a quilt sandwich with your three layers of fabrics, um, it can drag, the, the foot on the top can drag. So what a walking foot does is it does that same motion. So from both the bottom with the feed dogs and the top with the walking foot, it moves your fabric through nice and smoothly so that you don't get a lot of puckers. Now, it is possible to do some quilting on your domestic machine with just your normal foot, but you need to be very careful that you're not going to get puckers. I have done it in the past, I don't recommend it, but if you have to do it, um, I find that if you're holding your fabric behind, probably not this way, because I'm just trying not to put my hand in front of the camera, but um, your, your hand to the other side, and you're not pulling, but you're gently making sure that your top part of your fabric is going through at the same rate as the bottom. Um, but a walking foot makes it so much easier. So I'm just gonna pop that onto my machine now. Pop that in, do the little screw up a little bit and give it a tighten. So we're ready to go there. Now, one little item that, that came with my walking foot that I find really handy is this funny looking bit. And it actually goes into a certain little spot at the back. And what it does is gives me a guide. So once I've done my first row of, of quilting, um, I can then line up that row of quilting under this, this uh, guide, work out how far I want my quilt lines to be apart. And that's measuring from my needle to that guide. Um, and if I want to make it smaller, I push the guide in a little bit. Um, and then I just follow, instead of watching the needle, where the needle's going, I'm watching where that's going and making sure that's lining up with my previous line of sewing. And I get nice, even rows. So if you're quilting, your walking foot comes with one of these extra attachments, you'll, you'll find things uh, fairly nice and easy. Okay, so we've got our feed dogs up. Um, I'm going to increase the length of my stitch to about three on my machine. I've just got a straight stitch. I've got some, some thread in there that's um, it's actually a cream, just off white kind of thread. So it's not going to, um, you know, stand out too much though. It will, it will show on the, on the darker colors. Um, I use Aurifil threads and um, this is a, a, a lovely big thread box that I actually have on sale at the moment, but um, um, it offers lots of beautiful colors, the Aurifil threads. Now I use a lot of coordinating threads for my quilting. So, um, you know, I might, might look at something like a very pale aqua or pale blue on this. Um, would look fine. Um, the other one that is really, really um, handy is a light grey. And um, I don't know whether that you can see that, but very pale grey. And that goes with so many things. So if I'm not using chalk, which is the colour I've got in at the moment, um, I use this uh, 2600, which is a really pale grey. Um, or any of the pale pastels, the pale greens, creams, pinks even, and they sort of just meld into your, your quilting. You don't notice it quite so much and you just see the beautiful texture of your quilting. Okay, so where do we start? Now we had all these amazing pins, and remember how I sort of said, oh, I didn't want um, 
pins in the middle of uh, where I wanted to quilt first. And because, um, so I did them either side of that uh, main seam. And I am actually going to try and quilt. Um, I'm just gonna get that guide up and out of the way at the moment because I don't need it. And I'm actually gonna try and quilt down the middle of this seam. Um, if you're not confident about getting straight on a seam and staying on it all the way down, just go a little bit off, maybe a quarter of an inch and find somewhere on your walking foot that you can, can line up. So, you know, if I was gonna do maybe, probably it's almost more, half an inch, you know, I might line up the, the inside of that foot. There's quite a line there. It might be a bit hard to see on the camera, but um, there's a line there and I could line it up with that seam. And then I would keep nice and straight, but I would just be off this line. But because I have done this a few times, I'm going to stay on that line. I haven't got my, my, um, my table runner all bunched up, it's, it's going to flow quite smoothly. I've set my stitch length. Uh, the other thing, quilt, quilt gloves. They can be really handy. I'm not gonna perhaps bother with this tiny little small um, item, but quilt gloves just have um, like little ripples on, on the fingers so that you can kind of grip what you're, you're holding and what you're doing. Um, you can also use kitchen gloves, anything that's clean, obviously, but um, allows you to get a bit of um, grip on it. Well, let's go. So I'm just guiding it and trying to keep my stitch line on straight and on that seam. As I said, if you're not too confident, you can start just that little bit off the seam. Um, it, it looks great, but uh, it will allow you to, to just uh, keep a nice straight line without making it have to be too perfect. Now, um, the other thing is that we're starting in the middle. And like uh, when I was talking about by, um, basting, we start in the middle so that we don't get any puckers, we don't get any... Um, areas that uh, get all caught up, we're going to start in the middle and work our way out. So I'm going to go all the way down the middle of this, this line, this seam, just gently. And you can see that the walking foot is doing its job beautifully. It's just moseying on, pushing the fabric through gently. So I'm just going to come off the end of my quilt top. I've got an automatic cutter, but we're gonna break thread here, lift up the foot. Um, most sewing machines have two le levels of that, so I've not just lifted it up once, I've lifted it up twice. And I'm gonna go all the way back to the other side. And I'm gonna pull that pin out because it's gonna come, it's going to be in the, in the spot that I want. Now, if you haven't got one of these lovely little guides like I showed you before, um, what you can do is use the edge of your foot as um, the thing that you're going to line up. So if I didn't have that guide, I would perhaps be lining up the edge of my foot with that seam that I just did then. Um, and that would give me a good half an inch maybe of, um, of, a, a, of a line. But I'm actually going to go a little bit further and I'm going to come out to about, about there. So I'm just tweaking that guideline a little bit. Just putting it down, not so it's really tight, but just so that it's gonna skim across uh, the fabric. And I'm gonna put my foot down and I'm gonna put my needle in because then I wanna just take out a couple of these pins, these basting pins, so that I don't run into a pin straight away. Again, got my machine all nice, everything's working, and here we go. And so I'm, I'm actually watching over here, keeping that line on um, my sewing. Now I can see some more pins turning up in, in my uh, future, so I'm just going to pull a couple more of those out. And... I, I just try and, even with the gloves on, I, uh, I try and just 
not pull, but I'm just um, flattening out, making sure that there's no puckers and no bits of fabric starting to get caught. And you'll see I kind of walk my hands down one side and then the other. Oops, there's some more pins coming in my way. Get those next few out. Now, remember I was talking to you when I, in, the, in the basting video about when you pull out one of those basting pins, there's some small holes. So you can just rub your, your fingernail or finger over it, um, but don't worry about it too much because the first time you wash your, your project, um, those basting holes will disappear. Now, just getting back to these hands. So I'm moving, I'm, I'm not picking up both hands and moving them at the same time. I kind of move one and then the other, then one. And this means that I've always got control of the project. Uh, it's not going to go skewed or anything. I'm just going to mosey down one at a time, moving things, making sure that my seam stays aligned. Here's another couple of pins to remove. And we're almost at the second, at the end of the second uh, row of quilting. Lift my foot up nice and high, and here you can see what the quilting's starting to look like. Just move it over a little bit. So we're just getting nice straight quilting. Now, if you're going to do straight quilting like this, I would suggest doing kind of wider uh, rows and then coming back if you if you decide that you want to do more and put a, another line in the middle. Um, <coughs> You'll find that doing straight line quilting actually, uh, well, very dense straight line quilting takes a lot of time. So if you do the larger ones first, get them all done across your project and then go, wow, that took me two hours. <laughs> I don't have another two hours in my life to spend on this. And you can just leave it at that. Whereas if you start doing the smaller ones and get halfway through it and go, oh my goodness, this is just taking forever, um, your project might go into that nasty uh, work in progress uh, pile and never get finished. So start with the bigger ones and come back in and do one in the middle of them all if you decide you want um, closer quilting. Well, I'm going to sign off now and I'll come back and show you what the finished project looks like. So as we're getting out um, to the edge of your project, you'll find that it starts to, to get perhaps a little larger and, and more rolled up in this corner. So I just do a nice fold all the way along, all the way back, and then kind of pop it into my lap um, so that it's not getting squashed because the more you squash it up over here, the more it's going to wiggle <laughs> under your, your needle and you'll get your lines. Um, going crooked, so um, just keep it careful. And also when you're getting close to the end, I actually leave the pins in until I almost get to them. And that just helps to hold this line, the edge of, the, of your project nice and flat. It's not gonna start from the pucker. Does mean you need to sort of stop and start a little bit more on this edge, but um, it'll be worth it. You don't wanna get Puckers on the edge or gatherings, etc. Such beautiful fabrics. I do enjoy the quilting part, obviously. Um, you get to see all the lovely fabrics up nice and close. So we've finished half of um, our quilting. Put that open. So here we have, we've got that left side done. We need to do the right hand side. Now, it depends on the project, but I would now flip it around and continue sewing 
over this side because I want to use my guide. So we, we had that centre seam sort of nicely lined up and we used the guide for, the, um, for this side of the, the, the project. But I want to continue using my guide. So if I flip it around, I can line that up again, put my foot down, put my needle down, and now I can continue on doing this side of the project. Okay, so here I've finished my straight line quilting, about what, you know, three quarters of an inch, an inch apart, and I think that's gonna do. Um, I do love matchstick, the look of matchstick quilting. I just don't like the time it takes. So it's it's going to be fine. It'll sit nice and flat on my table. And if we wanna look on the other side, just to, to double check, actually you should check that straight away when you first start sewing, just to make sure that your tension is okay on the back, because obviously this is something that will be seen, um, not all the time, but um, when you perhaps get sick of using the top side of your table runner, you can flip it over and have the back showing. Um, but it's looking good, and I think we're ready now to um, trim up the quilt or the, the table runner and uh, put the binding on. But that's going to be another video, so thanks for watching.